can let me first have the elder, then I come to you. <laughs> thank you, right honourable speaker. Honourable members, thank you very much. Honourable members, of late, this parliament as an institution has been in the media. And what is there is now becoming an issue of public concern as to why it cannot be resolved. Honourable members, the cause of action, why our comrades are out of parliament, did not originate from this house. Neither did it originate from the decision of the presiding officer. Some of these actions originate as far back as 2020. 2020, none of us was in this house. And there is sufficient laws in this country where someone is aggrieved and he reports it to either police or he goes to court. And in case he's aggrieved by the decisions of this house, he can afford it within the rules. So in, this, in, this, in that respect, can we appeal to our colleagues in the event that the cause of action was not by this house to take appropriate measures by reporting the matters where they are supposed to report them in case they, they think they cannot be listened to there and there are members of parliament who can be listened to here, they should formally put it to the presiding officer. The presiding officer will use uh, Article 9 of the Constitution and process this business through the committee of parliament. Because this, committee, this parliament takes decisions on the issues that are processed through the committee. This parliament cannot originate business and take decisions without being processed. Because some of these people who are supposed to appear there cannot come in the chamber. So I would appeal through some members who can access them, let them formally put their case, their case be put into the appropriate processes of channel through Article 90, and in case they don't trust all of these committees of parliament, under, Luru, under our rule, 190, the speaker has power to put a select committee, and this co select committee is selected when both sides agree. The both on the government side will propose names, and the other side, they propose names. So that these matters can be resolved, because of some of these uh, subject matter. It's not a member of parliament. So I would okay. appeal to you, Madam Speaker, that we take that direction, and we get out of the media, because neither you nor members of parliament were a cause of action. I thank you. Thank you, thank you. Honorable members, that has already been said. The cause of action was not by this house. The decision was not by the speaker. We inherited problems. Way back from Mukura, the people were burnt in Mukura. Uh, Arab boy is also going to start now on that. So we inherited this. So we should not be held, I should not be held liable. Because it happened when I was not there, it did not happen in this house. And it is only this house that we can be able to resolve such issues. When we are all here, we will all stand for the good of the people outside there. But if we choose to address some of these issues in the boardrooms, <laughs> then the public will judge us. And I'm leaving it to the public to judge. Because you never know. And as Honorable said, if it is something really that we should handle, then we can even go for a select committee and have a report presented to this house if government is failing to respond. And to the best of my knowledge, government has not failed to respond. But government cannot respond to people who are not there. The ones who asked for the report are not in the house. Let them come back to the house and we give the report. And, and government, uh, government, can I hear from you? Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, for all intent and purposes, government had indicated on this floor that not once, not twice, we had meetings chaired by the Right Honorable Speaker, chaired 
by the right honorable deputy speaker many times on the same subject matter the same subject matter on human rights was debated through ministerial statements on the floor of parliament the other day when the deputy speaker was chairing he enumerated the times the same subject matter on human rights were investigated including a parliamentary committee in charge of human rights investigated the same the uganda human rights commission investigated the same some of the suspects have been charged in courts of law we have indicated here right honorable speaker to the best of the understanding of government we have done our part we are respecting the decree by the presiding officer then to say government was given 30 days but to the best of our recollection we have explained honorable members this is the same list the same list that was submitted to human rights commission same list submitted to a parliamentary committee that reported on the floor same list investigated by the different agencies of government for how long will this parliament continue with this legislative activism for how long for how long for how long right honorable speaker as a government we committed here i remember the honorable general david muhozi stated in very clear terms that because the presiding officer honorable gave us Amiro 30 days sit. i just wanted the house to know that you are around yes sit <laughs> So, right honorable speaker, we would want to join you as the presiding officer to support you to use all the mechanisms within the rules of procedure to compel our colleagues to come back to the house. You can invoke even certain provisions because the truth is they left this house on their own. Now they want to be hated by ourselves to bring them back. That we first explain here. We are going to politely decline, right, Honorable Speaker. There is time for everything. Even under the law, there's what we call the Limitations Act. Everything has a limit. For how long are they going to stretch us? Everything has a limit. And I beg to submit. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Isaac Otem Giupa, Deere County. I take this opportunity to congratulate you for the good blessings and also to wish you a happy birthday. I understand it is, I saw it somewhere on the platform. How happy birthday, please, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you so much. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to Honorable Achayo, Honorable Caroline, and my big sister, the Right Honorable Speaker of Tanzania, Dr. Tulia. Thank you. Thank you very much. May you live to blow as many candles as possible. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I thank you very much for the stand you have taken against this matter. It is sad that for the last month, our colleagues have actually tried to turn the name of this parliament and drag it into the muds. We cannot allow this place to turn into a theater. Parliament is a place of serious business, Madam Speaker. And they have been trying to drag us all into the muds. And I'm happy that you've uh, taken a stand on this matter. And uh, I actually thank the government chief whip for a very strong statement that he has made on this matter. And it is true, Madam Speaker, we are behind you to take any possible uh, procedural matter in order to make sure that our colleagues are compelled to come back in the house. And yesterday you made a very strong statement. We cannot have our colleagues who have abandoned us here, who have actually uh, left parliament, to choose and pick the areas of parliament that they benefit from to, to continue participating. That cannot be you know, happening. They want to continue go traveling abroad. They want to continue attending committees. They want also to go for the East African Games. That, where I beg, Madam Speaker, that you stand by your ground on that and we are behind you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Guang, Honorable Gualu. And then my brother of uh, FDC. <laughs> Madam Speaker, 
on behalf of my family, I want to begin by saying happy birthday to you and to our twins. I congratulate you and to the people of Bukedia. Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, I am happy that the government chief whip has spoken firmly here, but I want to remind you, some of us who have joined parliament. When I joined parliament, the ninth parliament, I found a strong foundation by the Oboas then. As of now, I don't know whether we interest ourselves to, lose, to listen to the population what they talk about this institution called parliament. It is true today in this parliament, we have the nearest big building near us here, which has almost reached parliament. And Madam Speaker, forgive me to mention this, that uh, with due respect, if you don't stand firm, it's like this institution is becoming a national theater. Why am I saying this, Madam Speaker? We used to admire legislators when we were young people. We used to admire debate of this institution. And it's the reason I endeavor to be here, irrespective from where I come from. But fundamentally today, are we really doing what the people of Uganda sent us to do here? Honorable Minister, we are doing Madam this. Speaker, there's a reason I'm bringing this. I want just you to give me one minute. First, we all want to accept that there's activism at play. And we cannot stop activism at play. I want to implore us that for me, I'm happy that they are not in the house. <laughs> and it is important that we continue with our business. Because now we are dealing with the reason why they sent us to parliament. With due respect, Madam Speaker, they are looking for a scapegoat to return. And I want to appeal to you, let them stay out. We are losing nothing and we lose nothing. We will continue to transact business on behalf of this country. Thank you, Honorable, Honorable colleagues. I want to say this. You were voted to be here by your own people, including those who are out there. And I want to call upon their constraints. If you want to solve a problem, can you solve it when you're out there? Come here and solve a problem here. But now you have chosen to be out. I want to implore my brother, Honorable Mpuga. I have a lot of respect for you. I do not know why you've got that activism from. You are a diplomat. If it is a pressure, please live to who you are. I thank you. Honorable members, we all need to be in the house. If our colleagues can be able to come back to the house, the same way they left, let them come back. This house belongs to them. The house belongs to them. Nobody chased them. And when they come back to the house, they will get all that they need. And those, the team out there is not just fighting for the few people. It's about a bigger population. They are doing a good job, but they must do a good job from inside. Because they need, they need support from the whole house. You'll, you'll find that the person who was kidnapped may not have been even noob. Maybe it was a relative to one of these NRMs. So we, let's not take the thing like it is a party issue. Right, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank you that you've held this parliament together just from day one that you started. Right Honorable Speaker, it is the responsibility of this institution to hold the executive accountable. And if we do not hold the executive accountable, who else is going to do that? I see the debate in this parliament degenerating between the opposition and the NRM, which should not be the case. The people who this side says have been killed, have been abducted, are our children, they are our relatives, they are our aunties, they are our friends. Therefore, when we are handling these matters here in Parliament, we must be very sensitive to the feelings of all this Parliament and the country, not to degenerate between the opposition and then the NRM. Finally, Madam Speaker, I want to request you that the appeal when I heard from the leader of the opposition was that government must commit to bring a comprehensive list here. 
Madam Speaker, you have the power. And you have been doing that before. You have helped this country to hold the executive accountable. And it is still within your power. I appeal to you, Madam Speaker, as I sit, that you give the government, the executive, another chance to bring a comprehensive list here of the demands raised by the leader of the opposition so that this matter can be brought to a rest. Because when I hear my friends, when I hear my colleagues say that you compel the opposition to come back to the House, that is not correct. We don't need to compel our colleagues to come to the House. We need to negotiate, dialogue, so that we bring this list together in the House and we discuss it. I thank you. Honorable Ebualu, Honorable Ebualu, for us to hold government accountable, we hold it from the house, not in the boardrooms. Don't degenerate me into going to the corridors. I chair the house, I do not chair the corridors. And members should come, to, they were elected to come to this house. Most of life. Yes, Honorable Kimosho, then uh, Dawudi. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Emmanuel, F UPC, I mean the FDC. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. The other day when my woman member of parliament, Honorable Jane. Pachuto. Pachuto. Avur. Avur. When she spoke on behalf of the Jonam people, the Pakwaj people, I couldn't say anymore. I only want to add that a happy birthday after giving birth is, a, is double sweetness. <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker, I have, I have learned something today which I don't know if I should continue to hold it that way. That when, when people walk out of parliament and they stay away from parliament, then it can be termed as political activism. I have learned it from here. And, and I'm saying this because you remember in FDC we used to have activism. I was in the group of Muntu that cherished building the party from the grassroots, not talking too much about activism, claiming our, our win, which, which we have not claimed up to now. So I, I, whatever people want to describe what has happened, I, I leave it there. And secondly, Madam Speaker, I, I, I know you have made some pronouncements. And I want to go and support my, my, my son-in-law, Minister Ogwag. Why, why should we continue to talk about it? Why don't we just continue with what we have to do? Because... Thank you. When, when an elder says, you move on. Next item. <laughs> Laying of papers, item Hon three. Honorable members in the VIP gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of senators and the staff of the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare from the Senate of Kenya. We have Senior Julius Mangor. He is a chairperson of the committee. Julius, you're most welcome. We have Senior Faki Mohammed. Welcome. He is a member of the committee. We have Senior Miraj Abdallah. Welcome, Madam. She is a member of the committee. We have Miss Mwanate Shaban. Welcome. She is a senior clerk assistant. And then we have Miss Gertrude, first clerk assistant. You are most welcome to Parliament of Uganda. And while here, feel at home. This is your sister parliament. And uh, Kenya and Uganda are one and the other. So, Karibu Sana. Join me in welcoming them. Thank you. Next item. Item three. Laying of papers. 
the annual performance report of the Finance Intelligence Authority for the financial year 2022-2023. Honorable members, Senior uh, Section 362 of the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2013 requires the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to table annual performance report for the Financial Intelligence Authority to Parliament within one month of its submission by the Board of the Financial Intelligence Authority. I now invite the Minister to table the report. Right Honorable Speaker, for the record I am holding brief for the Minister of Finance who got delayed in a meeting but will be joining us. And also, before I lay, permit me on behalf of the Leader of Government Business in Parliament, who is the Right Honourable Prime Minister, to convey on behalf of government a very, very happy birthday to you, Right Honourable Speaker. Government salutes you and wishes you more and more candles to be burned in the future. Thank you. I now move to lay on table the annual performance report of the Finance Intelligence Authority for the financial year 2022-2023 on behalf of the Minister of Finance. I beg to lay. Thank you so much. The, the report is referred to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for further assessment. Item four, laying of papers, sorry. Item four, statements by ministers. Item four one, Uganda's chairmanship of the non-aligned movement and the group of 77 and China and hosting of the 19th non-aligned movement and third South to South Summit. Honorable members, as you may be aware, Uganda will be hosting the 19th summit of the non-aligned movement on 15th to 20th January 2024. The Minister of Foreign Affairs will be providing us with information on NAM and it is basically for information. And uh, when that information is given to you, you can use it very well. But at the same time, we'll, we, Parliament will also be hosting Cisco. I'll wait also to hear from um, Mr. Honorable Katuntu after the minister has given his report. Honorable Minister. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I want to join my colleagues who have spoken earlier to wish you a pleasant birthday. Madam Speaker, permit me to take this opportunity to present an information paper to the House in respect of NAM and Uganda's chairpersonship of NAM. I'm pleased to address this August House on the preparations for the following important events and responsibilities. Hosting the 19th Summit of NAM Heads of State and Government, that's number one. Number two, hosting the third South Summit. Number three, Uganda's chairmanship of non-aligned movement for the period 2024-2027. And four, Uganda's chairmanship of the Group of 77 and China in 2024. As honorable members may be aware, Objective number 28 of the National Objectives and Directive Principles of State Policy of 1995 Constitution as amended of the Republic of Uganda provides for Uganda's foreign policy to focus, among other things, on one, promotion of the national interests of Uganda, two, peaceful coexistence and non-alignment, and three, active participation in international 
and regional organizations that stand for peace, well-being, and the progress of humanity. Brief background of NAM and uh, Group of 77 and China. Right Honorable Speaker, NAM was founded in 1961 at the first summit held in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, out of the desire to avoid the polarization of countries of the developing world during the Cold War era between the pro-Soviet communist countries of the Warsaw Pact and the pro-American capitalist countries belonging to NATO. It was also intended to further promote the colonization of the Asian and African countries which were fighting for their independence. Currently, NAM is a forum of 120 member states. In addition, there are 18 observer countries and 10 observer organizations. Details of the member states and observers are attached in the next year one. Since its founding, the work of NAM has been guided by the following 10 Bandanga principles. Number one, respect for fundamental human rights and for the purposes of principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Number two, respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations. Three, recognition of the quality, equality of all races and equality of all nations, large or small. Number four, abstention from intervention or interference into internal affairs of another country. Five, respect for the right of each nation to defend itself, singly or collectively, in conformity with the Charter of the United Nations. Seven, abstention from the use of arrangement, arrangement of collective defense to serve the particular interests of any of the big powers and abstention by any country from exerting pressures on the other country. Number eight, refraining from actions or threats of aggression or use of force against the inter territorial integrity or political independence of any country. Number nine, settlement of all international disputes by peaceful means, such as negotiation, conciliation, arbitration, or judicial settlement, as well as other peaceful means of the party's own choice in conformity with the Charter of the United Nations. Number 11, promotion of mutual interest and cooperation. And finally, respect for justice and international obligations. Right Honorable Speaker, with regard to the group of 77 and China, the group is a loose alliance of developing countries established on the 15th of June 1964. It derives its name from the 77 original signatories into the joint declaration of the 77 countries. Issued at the end of the first session of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in Geneva. Although membership of the group has expanded to 134, the original name has been retained due to the historic significance. I have enclosed the matrix showing the spread of NAM and G77 countries and those with your membership in the next year too. The primary goals of the group include, one, maintaining the independence and sovereignty of all developing countries, two, defending the economic interests of its members through promotion of equal standing with developed countries in the global marketplace, three, establishing a united front for negotiation on issues of common concern to the Greater South and the UN, and strengthening the ties between member countries. Right on our speaker, Uganda will host the 19th summit of NAM, heads of state and government, and the Sad South summit back to back. And I hasten to say, it's going to be the first time for a single country to host the two summits back to back. The NAM okay. summit is scheduled to take place between 15th and 20th January 2024, divided in two, three segments, namely 15th, 16th January 2024, senior officials, between 17th and 18th January 2024, ministers of foreign affairs, and between 19th and 20th January 2024, heads of state and government. Immediately after NAM summit, the third South summit will take place between 21st and 23rd January 2024. And as honorable members may recall, Third South Summit has been scheduled to take place, had been scheduled to take place in April 2020, but was postponed due to the outbreak of the COVID pandemic. This summit is organized under the framework of the Group 77 and China, 
That's G77 plus China. Right, Honorable Speaker. Enhanced preparation.